Hey, what's going on guys? Vulcan here. So one of the biggest questions people are asking themselves right now is whether or not you should pull Frigg. So you can't pull for her until September 1st because that's when her banner shows up, but she was added to the game so we can check out her weapon and finally get to see all of the confirmed changes hitting global. Previously, I'd been able to go out to a test client, get some gameplay, actually play her, which was great. If you want to see a lot of that, I have a couple videos in the description below. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down Frigg and talk about whether or not she's worth the pull, right? Is the value there? Is this going to be a short-term investment? Is this going to be something that you can invest in and then use for a long period of time? Let's break all of that down. So one, Frigg is bringing the Frost Resonance to Global. Now, this was previously found on Saki in the CN version. So this already raises some questions, right? Is Saki going to still have Frost Resonance and then replace Frigg down the road? Or is she going to have something completely different? But honestly, that's a conversation for another day. So we'll just shelve that for now. Now, in terms of Frigg, I was able to play her quite a bit, and while I never played the CN version, I want to talk about how well she's going to fit into Global. So, for those of you who are just curious and just like, Vulcan, tell me, is she worth it or not? I'm going to cut straight to the chase. If you want to build a Frost team, Frigg is fantastic to build around. She brings Frost Resonance, she has very strong attacks, she has a fun play style. Now, she does have Mediocre Shatter and Charge as a base, but when you use her skill, she gains a 25% Shatter increase, which definitely helps with that. But honestly, I mean, you shouldn't look at Frigg for Shatter or Fast Recharges because that's just not her strong suit. That's not her comparative advantage. What she is good at, however, is dishing out some great damage and synergizing with other Frost weapons like Subasa and Meryl. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Okay, so Subasa is one of the guaranteed, honestly, is the only truly guaranteed future-proof character. You can use her with almost any team in Global right now. She's still relevant in the CN version. And all around, you really can't go wrong investing in her. And seeing the value she brings in terms of her damage buffs, you won't regret getting dupes of her either. And this works out great in Frigg's favor because you don't feel like you have to prop up another character that'll then just fall out of the meta later on just to support Frigg now. Now, in terms of Meryl, this is your frosty shield smasher, okay? Meryl is fantastic at busting barriers with very little investment right now because she gets her shatter increase at one star. Now, according to those who have played CN, Meryl does get replaced by Saki in basically every category once she's introduced. Saki shatters better, she's faster, she dishes out more damage, and she still features a defensive type, so you can go in and get that fortitude buff if you really want it. Now, Saki is expected to be very far off, so again, investing in Meryl for just one star right now isn't a huge cost, and the perks are going to be insane for Frigg, because you can easily flip to Meryl, shatter some shields, and then go back to Frigg to unleash just tons of devastation. So, the whole kind of process of that just works really well right now. So, in my opinion, Using both of these characters is going to form a new Frost meta for PvE and Global. You cover all of your bases, right? You have damage with Frigg, you have buffs with Subasa, and you have Shatter with Meryl. And you just don't have to change things up too much. So if you're tired of Nemesis or you never really gelled with Samir for the whole Volt meta thing, then this is going to give you a very strong alternative to consider. Now, those are all of the ideal pairings with Frigg. So next, I think let's talk about what Frigg actually does that makes her worth pulling. So first off, her moveset, super fun to play. She's kind of a cross between like a Crow and a Meryl in terms of attack speed and feedback. So if you like your attacks to have some weight, Frigg fits that bill. So Frigg's primary skill, I say primary only skill, is called Fimble Winter. Now this deals a large amount of damage and spawns a big kind of icy AOE, and this is referred to as a Frost Domain. Now this is super important because Frigg gains some big advantages while it's active. One, she gets unlimited dodges, which is super nice to have in PvP. I think she's going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with because one, the unlimited dodges thing, but you also get a lot of damage perks um, that come with this as well. We're going to cover those, but truly, I just think PvP is going to be a whole different animal. I don't play PvP, so I can't really dive too far into it. So this is just me kind of reading surface level, but I am just waiting to see a bunch of clips of this. And then number two, she also gains a 25% increase to shatter rating for any frost weapon while in the frost domain. So this is where that whole kind of Meryl thing comes into play. Frigg's shatter rating is terrible. It's eight. So you don't really want to use her to shatter shields unless you truly have to. But while the frost domain is up, you can flip over to Meryl, who does have a high shatter. She's going to get even more shatter with that 25% increase, and she's going to be able to bust shields super quick. And really and truly, that's all you really want to use Meryl for. 
pull her out, break some shields, flip back to Frigg so you can deal some big damage, or even flip over to Subasa to make sure you refresh your buffs, and then dish out all the damage using Frigg's very good tool set. And those are all the things that come at zero stars. So this is no investment. This is just baseline with Frigg right now. Now, when or if you decide to go to a one star with her, she gets a new buff called Frostiness Points. And I think the word here in the description, um, receive, is a mistranslation. So we're gonna assume that it's actually supposed to say inflict or deal. So when you deal 550% times your frost attack worth of damage while in the frost domain, you gain a frostiness point. You can get 10 of these. And then once the frost domain ends, those are consumed and you'll deal a large amount of AOE damage to everything within the frost domain. So by default, I would say Frigg is a pretty strong single target and cleave focused weapon, right? Not a ton of AOE, but truly it's just, she's attacking things that are directly in front of her. But once you unlock this one star, you're gonna add some very strong AOE to her toolkit. And I know you can't use it all of the time, but it does add that little extra oomph to her damage and gives you another way to clear enemies. So the question here is, what about six starring her, right? Is it worth it? Is it worth to invest all the way to the very end? And honestly, I'm gonna be 100% real with you guys. Any character is going to be super strong as six stars. It's just the way this game is designed to work. But looking at Frigg, she does have some pretty awesome passes that you can unlock down the line, including the last one, which grants her a ice attack increase when you reach 25, or I'm sorry, 15 frostiness points. Now she does also gain some nice awakening traits if you wanna invest in her there as well. You get some increased frost attack damage as long as you remain in combat, which again might make for a really fun trait for boss battles and for PVP. So what's the ultimate verdict then, right? When it comes to Frigg, as a free-to-play player or even somebody who's purchasing and you know whaling out or dolphin or whatever, um, what's the verdict? So to me, Frigg is worth the pull if you want a Frost team. If you do not want a Frost team, if you don't enjoy Meryl and you don't enjoy Subasa, then I would avoid her. But if you do, then I would suggest getting Frigg as a strong core to build around. She's going to help increase the effectiveness of those two characters. And she's also a strong alternative to Saki in the CN version as well, which is great to hear because that means she doesn't really fall too far out of the meta later on, which makes you feel less bad about investing in her. Now, while she isn't good at shattering or recharging, she's very good at buffing other frost weapons that'll help get those jobs done. So guys, I wanna hear from you. What did I miss, right? What, what slipped past me that you are really focusing on that is going to either make or break this decision for you? So is Frigg worth the pull in your eyes? Are you going to switch to a Frost team? Let me know in the comments section below. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you.